When crafting treatment plans, when we want to gain space, we often focus on, on familiar techniques like IPR, expansion, proclination, distillation, extraction. But there's one more way to gain space that is often forgotten, and it's, it's an easy one to achieve. Well, easy if you understand how to control your movement with clear aligners. And this is what we will cover in this video. And I'm telling you, stay till the end because I will give you a trick to use to completely control the movement and decide where you want to create the space, not the software. Let's make the move. I'm Stefan Reinhardt, director of the education program for the Clear Institute, where Dennis make the move. Now, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This helps the algorithm suggesting our channel to people like you and keeps this channel alive. Also, click on the little bell to get notified when we upload a new video. Now, a question I often get is, what is the easiest way to create space in my clear aligner cases? Well, there is multiple ways that you, we can use to create space. And the one we, we want to avoid most of the time is extraction. Extraction! Extraction! Sometimes, sometimes you need it. But let's say it's not, it's not at the, the top of the list. Now, distillation. Distillation is possible too, but is it a case for that, is it a case for distalization? Do you need to distalize? I mean, we always have to be these dentofacial detectives. We have to look at what happened. You know, it's, it's you know, doing orthodontics. It's, it, it's about finding out what happened, why the patient is like that, and then finding the solution to bring them back to the ideal position. So do you need distalization? Did you have a movement of the posterior teeth forward did he have a maybe a premature loss of a a primary tooth that that the consequence of that is that all the posterior teeth migrated forward in that case you need to distalize so distalization yes can give you back some space and it's certainly not the easiest way to do it but it can be done with clear aligners you just really need a good understanding of the principles of mechanics. And by the way, we have an exceptional online course on distalization mechanics. Expansion. Well, you know, when I lecture uh, and I ask the question, expansion most of the time comes first, but how much space do you really get from expansion? And, and where, where do you get it? Because in reality, you will usually get about half of how much you expand, meaning if you expand four millimeters, you will get around two millimeter of arch length and mostly in the posterior region. And most of the time, we want that space in the anterior region. So be careful with expansion and, and knowing especially that when you use clear aligners, it, it's not real expansion, it's mostly arch development that we're gonna do, but you will not open a suture with clear aligners. Proclination. Proclination is probably the easiest way to get some space. But can you do it? Do you have the biotype that, that permits to do it? I mean, if you procline the teeth, will you end up with gums recessions? And you know how that feels. If you don't, ask me how I know. Been there, done that. Not a good day at the office. And then there's IPR interproximal reduction or air rotor stripping, ARS. And a lot of dentists are still against IPR. And I personally have no problem with it when it is performed in the right way. And scientific literature is clear on that. You will do no harm to your patient by performing IPR the right way. But if I have the choice between doing IPR and, and not doing IPR, I would choose not to do it, of course. By the way, let me know for fun just in the comments below how you feel about it, how you feel about IPR. 
That would be interesting. So if you're against IPR, good, no problem. But if you need space, you need to find a way to create some space. So what about the other options, Stefan? This is why we're here. Yes, I know this is why you're here. And this is where it gets interesting. Now take a look at your molars. Well, not, not your molars, but, but the molars on the cases you are treating, are they rotated? Now what happens with rotated molar? Do they take more or less space? Now molar is like a square or a rectangle. Now if we take a square, we rotate it, see what happens. Et voila, they take more space. So look at this example here. Look at the rotated molar here. Now, if I rotate it back to the right position, you see that I'm gaining some space like this, see? So I'm gaining some space. It takes less space like that than it did before. But wait, wait, Stefan, I, I want the space for the anterior teeth. And here, the second molar is moving forward. Impressive, very impressive. Okay, so how can we control that? And, and this is where you will be so happy that you stayed till the end. And by the way, if you're still here, it's because you like this video. So click on the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us going on and, and motivates us to continue creating content. And it also helps Google understanding there's a value to this channel. Okay, look at what happens when I rotate the molar here. The teeth next to the molar are moving. So I, I don't really have a control over these teeth on maze on the distance. So if you look carefully, you will see that the premolar, premolar is moving and the molar is moving. So where do you want to create that space? Because let's say I want all the space to be mesial to my first molar because I want to bring the anterior teeth more posterior. Then I will lock the teeth into position before I move the molar. So I right click on the premolar, I lock the tooth into position, I do the same thing with the second molar, and then I can move my first molar, create this rotation, this correction here, and then look at what happens. I have space on the mesial and space on the distal. Then, then I can move my molar here like this. I can move my molar and decide that if I want the space all on the mesial, I can move my molar distal like this. Therefore, all the space is here on the mesial. Then what I will do, I will lock my molar into position I will unlock the premolar and look what will happen as I unlock the premolar. See, the teeth came distantly. They moved distantly. Now I have this space here in the front and I could just go on my IPR tool. I will remove the IPR here that was in between these two teeth. I need to unlock it first. Then I can remove the IPR and I will eliminate that space here and look, everything moved. So everything was created for the anterior teeth, to, to, to use that space to align the anterior teeth. Okay, so Stefan, what if I want to use a space distal to my first molar? Let's say there is an impacted third molar and we want to move the second molar forward. Challenge accepted. So let's go back to when we created the space. So here we are, we're back to where we were with that space on the mesial and, and distal, we have 0.6 millimeter of space on the mesial, 0.6 millimeter of space on the distal. The premolar is locked, the second molar is locked. Now I will move my first molar here and here. See, if I continue, what will happen is that there are some IPR that will be created, you see? So we don't want any IPR. We, let's say we don't want IPR. So now, the whole space, the 0.6 plus the 0.6, 1.2, really good in math, uh, is created here. What I will do then, I will lock the first molar and I will unlock the second molar. Now it doesn't go uh, measly uh, by itself. So what we'll do, we'll eliminate the space here and look what happened. The second molar moved measly by itself. So this is how we can control um, 
how we want to use the space and where we want to use it. Now, one funny thing that is worth mentioning about this is that when we have a rotated molar, it often looks like it's in a class two relation with the lower molar. So if we look at the case here and we look at the side view like that, you see that the rotated molar is really in class two. But look at what happens when we rotate it. If I rotate it back, just by rotating, I can suddenly go back to a class one relationship. I mean, isn't this amazing? You gain space and you achieve a class one occlusion at the same time. Like my friend and mentor, Jerry Sampson would say, how does it feel to feel smart? Now there's so much to learn when it comes to orthodontics using clear aligners. And at the Clear Institute, we have everything you need and more. No matter if you're new to Clear Aligners or a confident provider, we got you covered. Live courses, online courses, complete programs, private coaching, we have everything you need to master Clear Aligners and get that confidence that you can integrate them successfully in your practice. If you like this video, you will love the way we provide education. Now take a look at our website all the links are in the description below, and there is probably even something here somewhere that you can click. So don't hesitate to share this video. Don't keep us a secret. That's everything I have for you today. My name is Stefan Reinhardt. I'm the director of the education program for the Clear Institute. Have fun creating space with your rotated molars. If you like this video, these other videos might interest you as well. There is a lot to learn when it comes to clear aligner treatments, and this is what we do. It's all about making the move. So have fun exploring new avenues with success with clear aligners.